Yeah, so it's an early morning session. We shall be having this advanced financial reporting. Early morning, we have introduced this module, AFR, AFRA, Advanced Financial Reporting and Analysis, which of course will be running from 5 a.m. 5 a.m. to 7.00 a.m. to 7.00 a.m. I will be among the teachers that will be taking you through this uh, session. All right, and uh, to enable us uh, be able to take you for this subject uh, effectively, number one, we will recommend that you attend, uh, if possible, all our Zoom classes. All our Zoom classes, very important. That's very important. And then number two, we are connecting you, or rather you must have been connected by now, to our learning management uh, system, our learning management system, this learning management system is so important because all these Zoom live classes, we are recording them. And of course, we shall be putting them in the LMS. We shall no longer be sharing them on the links on WhatsApp. We shall be putting the Zoom classes straight away on the learning management system. And then number two, in the LMS, you'll be able to get access to the notes, all the notes, all the notes, all the notes, so that when we are dictating that here, we don't really have to give you like everything, right? So here it will be like a high level and then you'll be able to get your uh, in-depth notes in the LMS, number one, that's notes. And then number two, you'll be able to get access to all videos, like last semester, class videos, all of them covering the whole syllabus. Why do we do that? Because we would expect those great, great students who've got time to even read ahead of us, to read ahead of us. Ladies and gentlemen, remember now with this reduced, with this reduced, reduced what year? Yeah, reduced sessions reduced uh, period. Now we are required here to tackle all these uh, 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 content in less than three months, in less than three months. So it cannot be a war of the teacher alone. We must partner with you to fight this particular, at times they call it a monster, but no, it's not really a monster. It's a good body because it's able to give us livelihoods. In this case here, we fight against what here cast left together. So you must be able to run some race. As I run this race like that, we are running together. We are running together. I'm teaching you here. And of course, whenever you get some free time, you should be watching, ladies and gentlemen, what here, videos on our learning management system. Very, very important. In this LMS, ladies and gentlemen, when you open it, like now I can try to open it. When you open it, when you open this LMS, when you open the LMS, what are you able to see? What are you able to see? If, for example, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, I just come here and share my screen and share my screen. This is how the LMS looks like. Like you'll be able to see here, we have got what here? Cuts. Like this is AFR, cut one. I expect the fact that, for example, once I cover like say four or five sessions, you guys should be able to attack this. You should be able to strike this cut one. AFR cut one. So you can see in this case here for May to August 2023 videos that were captured. Last sitting, all of them are here. And these are the videos that I'm talking about that you guys should be able to use to at least move ahead of the teacher. We should all be struggling with that. You when I'm doing my Zoom live classes here, here should be basically about like, how do we tackle this? How do we do this? Because I expect you to have watched some videos ahead. I'll always be giving you the plan. So you can see the course outline, it's given here. And the Zoom links, we shall be sharing Zoom links here. So we have like topic one, notes are given, notes are given, everything is given here. Everything is given here. And the videos are also there. The videos are within the notes, like that. So is there anybody who has not yet gotten access to our learning management system? Is there anybody who has not yet gotten access to our learning management system for advanced financial reporting? Remember that LMS is for all the papers, but now here I'm teaching you AFR. Is there anybody who has not yet gotten access? Oh, he's yet to get, okay, yet to join. So there is a link that was sent in the group. Once you get to that link, of course, you'll be able to sign up and we'll be able to see you from our back end, from our back end and say, hey, this guy has applied for AFR and then we shall be able to do what you to activate. Yes, 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 you're right. Mofat, you've already registered. You can't access because you must have registered late at night yesterday when my people were already sleeping. So they'll be able to activate this uh, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. 
the LMS is a game changer. And now there is also one problem. There is a problem that uh, when students have gotten access to LMS, they stop waking up. They stop attending our live classes. Ladies and gentlemen, this LMS is not supposed to be used in isolation. This LMS is supposed to be complementing what we do in the Zoom. So I expect you to be waking up every day. You must wake up. You must wake up and attend what year our Zoom live class. You know, Zoom live classes are quite important. Why? Because they enable you to be on your toes. You know, you know, it's a team. We are working as a team. So when you come for the Zoom classes, then ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to see, for example, this teacher is here. These are what the students are asking. I mean, it, it makes you to even participate very well in our WhatsApp pla platform discussions. So please never, ever, don't tell me that now Malimo have gotten access to LMS, then I'm not going to read on my own. No, you still need that companionship as we get along. We need the companionship as we get along. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, apart from this, what else do we expect you to do? Apart from this, we also have our famous revision kits. We have our famous revision kits. The questions in this case here, the kits which have got CASNEB questions and answers updated, updated. So what you're trying to do as a college, you have realized that so many students can't afford these revision kits, eh? which are going for about a thousand. And our audience really is spread outside there. So what you have done through our LMS, we have uh, introduced a section that will be selling books to you online books, online books, and we're going to make a decision to sell these books to you at a very, very affordable price. I won't mention the price right now because we still have to get a decision from the board of directors, All right? But it has to be something very minimal because you would want a situation where if Molimu does like say two questions, two Kasneb questions, then you should be able to create time and work on some questions there at your free time, at your free time. So we'll be having eBooks, eBooks for these revision kits from uh, as early as tomorrow, and we'll be able to make a decision regarding the prize. Ladies and gentlemen, all through as we study, we shall be guided by our syllabus. Ensure that all your teachers are able to cover the syllabus in full, to cover the syllabus in full. So this is the syllabus that we shall be working with. So we have this syllabus, advanced financial reporting and analysis, so many guys forget this analysis aspect, the ratios, the EPS. Although we don't do the ratios like we used to do them in the intermediate level, but there is quite a lot to be analyzed in advanced financial reporting. So this paper is intended to equip the candidate with knowledge, uh, skills, and attitudes that will enable him or her to account for more complex transactions, prepare advanced financial statements, and reports in the private and public sectors, and the public sector. So meaning that uh, we must also be good in terms of what we call IPSAS. IPSAS stands for International Public Sector Accounting Standards. And demonstrate awareness of trends in accounting, uh, in accounting practice. So like which trends are we talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, remember from 2024. Now it is uh, within the IFRSs that from 2024, all business, especially listed companies, those companies selling their shares at the stock exchange will be required, will now be mandatory, but they must produce what we call sustainability reports. They must produce sustainability reports. So then sustainability reports becomes what here, yeah, an emerging thing. From 2024, it's ahead of us. From 2024, it's ahead of us. So then that means that even as a student, as I prepare for my December exams, I have to be quite aware of what sustainability reports are, and they're not very uh, technical things, no. For example, when you are reporting, using this concept of sustainability or integrated reports, we talk over uh, you reporting on the pretext of uh, the three Ps, three Ps. So if you are a RCM college and you are listed, then in this case, at the end of the year, as you produce your annual reports, we need to see you reporting on the profits that you generated, how much profit do you generate? We need to see you reporting. We need to see you reporting on the planet. How good were you to the planet? How good were you to the planet? Planet basically means what year? Our environment. It means in this case here, 
what are we doing in terms of the ozone layer? Are we able to plant trees? All right, because you're not careful as a gentleman, given what is happening here, even with global warming, we may not have really resources to support future generations. That's why like yesterday, like actually the whole of this week, we are talking about what your climate changes in Africa. I mean, if you go, for example, I acquired some piece of land at Isin a long time ago. I'm doing some farming there, all right? When I went there, that's like how many years? Like uh, eight years ago, yes, eight years ago, at least you could see some rainfall, all right? I could plant my beans in this case here without uh, any help, any water coming from boreholes or external sources, all right? But as we speak right now, I'm telling you in Kajiado, I mean, the, even the, I mean the, uh, the place is very warm. The place is hot, actually. There is no rain at all. So it's not a, a Kajiado alone. The, 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 the climate is changing. Weather patterns are really changing. So in this case, as and gentlemen, then they would want businesses to tell us, I mean, you guys are the consumers of resources. Are you giving back to this planet? What are you doing? Like Equity Bank reported last year, they have now planted all the way up to the a millionth tree. All right. So in this case here, then what is your contribution as a, an institution towards what here, uh, this uh, uh, planet here? Are, are you going green? Are you still among those institutions like now RSM? You can imagine right now as we speak, I'm using, I'm using in this case electricity to power up everything. How I wish it can reach a level where we are able, for example, to have this power up being done by, in this case, yeah, solar, green energy, green energy. But of course, in terms of a carbon footprint, I think as RSM Online College, we are really, really trying because like right now, we have most of you guys joining our classes from wherever you are, you're not traveling. So it means in terms of carbon emissions, as we get to sustainability reports from next year, if there is any institution that can be up and standing, and of course, proud is saying that uh, we have also helped the planet, it will be RCM. Why? Because we'll be able to say, hey, how many students of ours now are able to study from wherever they are? As an employer, do we have, for example, people who are working uh, remotely, like somebody in this case here, who must have taught you guys QA, called Baba Akeo. He teaches QA from Baringo. He doesn't have to travel really. And most of our teachers, about talk of 50% of our teachers, they don't have to travel to our studios here to do the classes. So in terms of really savings, in terms of uh, the carbon footprint, then we are doing very good. Because every time you travel, it means what here? It means fumes going to up there. We shouldn't be among the very, very fast people like now, given that we are also destroying, you know, we have got pluses and negatives here. We are destroying uh, uh, forests. How are you destroying forests as a RCM? Of course, we are printing our books. All right. Then we should be able to come and tell the whole world in terms of our sustainability reports, fine, we consumed this amount of paperwork. But then how many trees were we able to plant in Karura Forest? So you count like that. All right. Right now, now we are talking of what here? putting our books in e-learning platforms. People should be able to download and read from their phones. Then that means that we are trying to uh, be uh, good to the planet. So in terms of sustainability report, those are the kind of things you report. For example, water usage. Like you should be able to come and tell us last year, we used, for example, 10 cubic meters of water. And then this year we have used eight cubic meters of water. Talk about reusage. Talk about, in this case, a recycling uh, activity that you have, all right? So you expect to get these kind of questions in an exam because now, from 2024, we will be reporting on sustainability uh, context here, sustainability context. So we have here profit, we have planet, and then lastly, we have uh, people. We have people. Ladies and gentlemen, we expect you to go ahead and tell us, you as an RCM, how good are you to your employees? If, for example, you are or rather you are turning over, your turnover, for example, is a billion, and yet what is going to employees is less than 100 million, less than 10%. Remember the world statistics here, the world over. Right now we are talking over about 30%. 30% of whatever you earn should go to your employees. All right. Are you empowering your employees, for example, by taking them to training institutions? 
are you encouraging them to get even more skills or are you that kind of an employer who thinks of uh, employment being some kind of a prison that we don't want them to know so many things because these guys are going to start their own business no i mean like me i've lost so many guys who have gone to start their own colleges and i'm proud of them i call them severally for even a cup of coffee because they went through my mentorship all right this is not to worry so long as these guys have been able to give you their contribution in terms of time, then automatically they have set a base for you. So in future, it's upon how you do recruitment, how you, in this case, you keep on bringing new blood, fresh blood into uh, the company. All right. So you must tell us in this case here, how good have you been to your employees in terms of paying them salaries? Do you have in this case here, for example, any team building, team building activities? All right. Like this December. Of course, we have to go, all of us as a staff, over RCM to where, to a place like, for example, Mombasa, like on the 16th, on the 16th, on the 16th of uh, this uh, coming, of this month, actually, since of this month, we have a get together of all the students and uh, RCM online college staff at YMCA, all right? So in this case, you must tell us, uh, what have you been doing to empower your people? And you have to clearly put that in the financial statements. Tell us, in this case, your salaries and wages went to uh, 300 million. Out of the sales of a, a, a billion, 300 million went to my people, all right? When we talk of uh, uh, also people perspective, you must report on what we call work-life balance. Work-life balance. So under work-life balance, what do we have? Under work-life balance, I mean, are you that kind of employer who is putting people to work for more than eight hours? And if you're doing that, there's no harm with that. Of course, we also expect you to be uh, remunerating them, compensating for, for them for the extra time. But even as you compensate them, we expect these people, these people are social beings. We expect them to go and interact with who? With their families after work. If possible, try to ensure that, uh, like ourselves, like the guys like the guys who teach early morning, early morning from 5, 5 a.m., the same guys cannot be again teaching in the evening. Like now we can't have uh, Mr. Nobat or Bomba who teaches for us AFR in the evening, teaching again in the morning. We'll be straining these guys. So if they're doing early morning, by about one, these guys should be up and about. Let them, them go and engage in other things. Let them go and in this case here especially, uh, engage in some sporting activities and pay for them if possible. Of course, we haven't reached that level. But once we reach that level, we should be able to pay for these guys here yeah, small activities really that they should be able to do. Because whether you like it or not, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this concept of uh, psychological well-being is very, very important. If you have got employees who are sickly, simply because you're overworking them, then your productivity will not dive, will not dive like that. So three Ps. So we expect this concept of what year sustainability reporting. Now, then we have learning outcomes. A candidate who passes this paper should be able to prepare financial statements here for subsidiaries, associates, and jointly controlled entities in compliance with the IFRSS and international public sector accounting standards. So, ladies and gentlemen, they are telling us that uh, any student who passes this paper must be good in terms of what year, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, group consolidations. So you must know what we call IFRS 3. IFRS 3 stands for what year? This IFRS 3 talks about business combinations. Business combinations. Then when two businesses combine, then you must consolidate. Remember, they're talking of two business, two or more business combining, business combination. So if, for example, you go and acquire Mumia Sugar today, if you acquire Mumia Sugar today, which is not trading nothing, which is not trading anything, then you can't say that now RCM has combined with Mumia Sugar Prepare. No. If you acquire a shell of a company, you'll only be told, look at their property plan and equipment. Add them to your PPE. Don't consolidate, don't calculate goodwill. If the company is not uh, in business, don't do group consolidation as per IFRS, what, because IFRS 3 talks about what year business combinations. Then we have IFRS 10, which talks about consolidation process. We have IS 28, which basically talks about the equity approach of accounting for associates and the joint ventures and the joint ventures. So we shall be looking at that intensively because 
AFR, unlike financial reporting, it's big in terms of what here consolidation, including what we call group cash flows, group cash flows, including what we call the group cash flows. Then number two, analyze financial statements for public and uh, private sector entities like using the EPS, ETC, account for complex accounting transactions, apply ethical standards in accountancy work and practice. Then what is the content? I'll be able to go through the content, accounting for assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities are as covered in financial accounting and the financial reporting are also relevant here. Then we have 1.2 leases, including sale and leaseback and the dealers in leased assets. Deferred tax with group aspects, employee benefits, share-based payments, financial assets and financial liabilities, impairment, hedging, embedded derivatives and the disclosures. We have fair value measurement. And then we have the impairment of what year? Assets and assets lose value. When assets lose value, then how should you be able to account for the lost value through this standard of impairment of assets? Then number two, we have preparation of financial statements for interest in other entities. In other, if we have an interest in a subsidiary, how do we do the accounting? Accounting for associates and joint ventures, including foreign entities, disclosures of interest in other entities. Then we have preparation of financial statements for other entities, financial statements here for banks, financial statements here for insurance companies, interim financial statements, financial statements in hyperinflationary economies, including the preparation of financial statements. We have financial statements complying with IFRSs for SMEs. Remember SMEs, they don't do full IFRS. Full IFRS is complex. Full IFRS is for listed companies. For SMEs, we have IFRSs for SMEs, which of course uh, leaves out some complex, complex IFRSs. So in this case here, because remember SMEs, you also appreciate that uh, some of these companies may not even be having fully qualified accountants. They may not be having accountants in this case, ladies and gentlemen, who are uh, good with these standards. So in this case, then you give them a smaller version of the full IFRS. So it must be good in terms of IFRSs for SMEs, IFRSs for SMEs. Okay, then we have analyzing financial statements where they want us to look at uh, earnings per share. EPS, EPS, EPS is quite a big, uh, big thing here. Then we have related party disclosures. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, if there is any place that makes uh, companies uh, lose and lose seriously in terms of uh, them losing cash and the other resources, it's because of what we call related parties. And we shall be able to define who related parties are who related parties are. So ladies and gentlemen, when we talk of uh, related parties, what are we debating as an RP? Basically, a related party is uh, any party that can control you as a company. Any party that has got control over you, automatically that's a related party. And all transactions with related parties must always be disclosed, disclosed in the notes of the accounts. So these related parties could be like a, uh, if you are a subsidiary, if you are company A, and then you happen to be having like a parent company, you see a parent company is able to control you. It's able to say who will sit in the board here. All right, all right, all right. So if for example, we are A and we have director, senior management, senior management are able to control us and they can control us uh, in a bad way. They can come and for example, use companies assets for their personal interests. They can decide in this case here to buy goods and services from our company A here at throw away prices if not for free. So then any business that we tackle, any business that we tackle with a related party has to be disclosed, has to be disclosed, has to be disclosed. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen. You remember when you talk of the key uh, management personnel, we're also looking at their family, their family. Assuming, for example, today RCM was to be a pastor, or rather RCM was to be a church, and I'm the pastor in that church. 
What do you think in this case here of my wife as regards to this RCM church now? My wife will have quite immense powers. So if uh, my wife does any business with this RCM church, then if you're looking at what we call uh, what we call integrated reports, we are reporting everything, disclosure requirements, disclosure requirements, we are required to disclose any business that RC, even if she doesn't have any direct stake, she has a stake through me. Because this lady will come and one day tell me, you know what, my darling, I have a birthday. And because she is calling me a darling and uh, whatever, then I have to prove that for sure. So I'll get into the company's coffers and there, buy her a vehicle, five million. So if that happens, then it has to be disclosed, especially for listed companies. I mean, before investors come and put in the investment in your company, they have to look at those disclosures. And one of the areas that is quite contentious is RP, related parties. I have to know how related parties are being handled and they must be defined very well. Because related parties, in most cases, ladies and gentlemen, they have really messed up with institutions. Remember, institutions are supposed to enjoy what we call longevity. They're supposed to outlive the owners. But if you go, for example, look at some of these great churches, all right? And that is why when you look at Max Weber, Max Weber spoke about what he spoke about institutions that will live long because they enjoy what we call bureaucracy. They work with bureaucracy, rules and regulations. And remember, like he said, churches, like Catholic church. You see, if you are a Catholic, I'm not a Catholic myself, but you see, Catholic has got order. You can't just wake up one day and say, for example, during the mass, and then you start singing choruses the, uh, the, the way you see. No, there is order. Even if you go, for example, to their barrios, Catholic churches, they have got order. They've got order. And the same order, in this case, is applicable, for example, in terms of uh, how these guys, for example, use uh, the uh, church's what here yeah, money, rules and regulations. And that is why this church, I'm not saying that they, they're the ones who will go to heaven. Really. Please don't get me wrongly. No, they may not even go there because really going to heaven depends on your own uh, efforts here. Relationship with God, all right? But you see, the church has got order. But these churches that we have outside here, they're good. Churches in this case here owned by couples. They're good. But where do they mess? Related parties. These are guys who can't say that now we have a, a salary. That you can only draw a salary, for example, of 100000 per month. And then, of course, as years go by, as we add salaries for other staff, we also add the same way. So that the church can be left with resources to run orphanages. To do schools like Catholic is big in schools. I mean, Catholic is supporting like 20% uh, of education in Kenya here. They are big in hostels simply because these guys are following what here yeah, rules and regulations. They, they, they are big on related, how are you benefiting as a priest? Those guys are big on that. You can't tell us that people are coming here, they're contributing millions and millions, and then you as a priest, you're going home with everything. They can't allow that. So even you guys, when you start your businesses, related party is something that you look if you, would, you look at. You would want to have an organization that you're going to bequeath to your children and, uh, of course, your grandchildren. You must look at related party, and advanced financial reporting needs us to study this concept of related party. Related party. By the way, are we together? Are we following? You know, I could be talking too much. Are we following? Today is the first session. I'm just reading the uh, course outline and trying to show you what is expected of us. Ah, great. Thank you so much. Great, 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 great. Following great. Then, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have the uh, operating segment. Remember, as we shall be seeing, uh, it will be very important as per IFRS 8 for you as an organization to report on segmental basis. Tell us that this is RCM Online College. This is the profit of RCM Online College. But at the end of the day, you must come and look at the components of RCM. For purpose of anal analysis, you must look at the components. You must look at the segments. So for example, we have a business uh, within RCM. We have the CPU, we have ACC, we have ATD, all right? We have the online college. We have the physical college. We have early morning class that we have just introduced. We have evening. So all these, you need to come and prepare uh, financial statements on the basis of segments like that. 
And remember, it's not everything that you have in the company that qualifies to be called a segment. We have very, very important rules. We should be seeing them like the 10% rule. We have very, very important seg uh, threshold like the 75%, something I'll be able to explain when you start doing this. Segment reporting. For analysis of a performance, it's important for you, ladies and gentlemen, to always have segments so that we don't have products that we are really trying to push in the market. We are spending a lot of resources and maybe they are what we call problem children. If you remember what we call the BCG matrix. If you remember, there is what we call the BCG matrix. BCG matrix, Boston Consulting Group matrix. And the BCG matrix have got four types of products. We have products in this case that are cash cows. Cash cows, you don't have to advertise them a lot. These are like your CPA, like our CPA now here. We don't have to advertise CPA a lot. Already, these are product that is all out there sold. So ours in this case is to do what you to simply uh, milk this cow. We're milking the cow. Don't take it uh, like that. We're milking it. It's helping us to finance our operations like that. And then we have, for example, what we call the question mark. Question mark or the problem child. Problem child. Problem child. So under question mark or a problem child, once a kid is born, and then as a gentleman, this kid is expected to grow, you start giving them Seralac, you start giving them the naan. It is if the mother doesn't have milk. Some of these uh, young mothers nowadays, I don't think they eat enough. I think they fear putting on weight. So most of them, they their milk has to be complemented. All right? So here you are. You're giving this kid lots of food, lots of Seralacs, lots of other ingredients, but this kid is not growing at all then we shall be able to refer to this kid as a problem child. A question mark will be put there. It's a question mark type of a product. And then when we are reporting using segments, we shall be able to identify this kind of a product. So if, for example, you look at uh, Unilever. Unilever, in this case, when they are doing their financial statements, assuming they are looking at their segments on the base of products, then they'll be able to have OMO. You know, OMO is a product whose uh, past was very good. It has lived its time, whose past was very good. But I think of late, the product has really, really been suffering what year? Quite a lot outside here. And it started with these, uh, this thing, Yamosho Moja. Can I remember the name? Aerio. Aerio. So Aerio came and told us that this is Aerio. And they, they did a very good advertising, very good advert. For those of you who have got very good memories. But when you wash your clothes using Aerio, white as snow. With just one, you're doing one, one way laundry, Mosha Moja, as white as what you know. And then the other soaps of which now they were trying to classify like Omo and the rest. In this case here, were not even after washing, I could see those ladies trying to. I mean, nothing was happening there. All right. And even Unilever took these guys to court because of that. They lost the case. The thing is, Unilever is doing quite a lot to try to sustain OMO. But now with the other detergents coming from Uganda, Tanzania, and of course the fact that uh, I'm not very, very sure of this, please don't take me long, wrongly here, but I'm told like OMO is very corrosive to uh, hands when you wash using OMO. Do we have some young men in this case here who are uh, bachelors who are using OMO to wash? I'm told it's not as good as sunlight. Some young men who are bachelors here. Please talk to me this morning. Please talk to me this morning. Please talk to me this morning. Do we have some young men who have tried uh, using OMO? Aerio. Aerio, Raf says Aerio. Aerio must be good. Aerio must be good. But it's not the best. There are other detergents in this case that are coming now from Uganda and Tanzania that are giving these guys locally here yeah, a run for their money. So the thing is, you must report using what we call segmental, segmental, segmental. You can see like what Jawada is telling us there, we have Duffy, Duffy, you guys try that. Duffy, Duffy, Duffy. All right. So then we have financial reorganizations and uh, reconstructions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. There is no way you run a company and expect things to be all that nice throughout. Things will happen. Bad things will happen in, on the way. All right. You've tried marketing, pushing your products in the market. Nothing is happening. No revenues. And yet you've got creditors here. You've taken a loan. So at some point in time, 
you will be forced, ladies and gentlemen, because of the bankruptcy, to come and say, hey, I surrender. You even go to court and tell the court, please declare me bankrupt. Please declare me bankrupt. So once you're declared bankrupt, of course, your creditors will be given time. They'll be told, hey, stay away from RCM. Don't go to RCM asking for your money for, say, like three months or even three years. During that time, what do you do? You are supposed to be reorganizing. You can reorganize your capital structure such that if, for example, you had a lot of debt as opposed to a lot of equity, talk to these debt holders. Tell them, you guys, like what Kenya Airways did, you guys come over here, let's talk. Instead of this company dying and then you've got nothing, even the assets you can't sell, it's assets. Why don't you accept our shares in lieu of the debt instruments? They'll accept. So this is a very important topic. The concept of what year reorganizations, concept of reconstructions that we shall be looking at uh, with you in the near future, in the near future here. All right, and then we go to public sector accounting standards, where again, under public sector, they want us to look at segment reports, related party disclosures, impairment of cash generating assets and non-cash generating assets, disclosure of information about general government sector, consolidated financial statements, investments in associates and joint ventures. And then we have six other reports and emerging issues, other reports and the emerging issues in financial reporting. The conceptual framework is very, very important. And the process of developing new accounting standards. This one is always asked. And the students are not able to tell us the process of develop, development of IFRSs. 6.2, proposals to revise, update existing standards and recommendations to issue new ones. We have what we call discussion papers and exposure drafts. The examination board, which is CASNEB, shall provide guidance on which discussion papers and exposure drafts are examinable for specific years. Then we have management commentaries, what we call the MDAs, management discussions and analysis. We have capital markets authority, corporate governance, reporting requirements, like right now, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is basically on the disclosures. You must also tell us who is in the governance structure of your firm who sits at the board. The board was supposed to meet how many times last year? Who came for how many meetings? Very important. So under the governance structure, there is no way the board chairman can ever be uh, the CEO of the company. The two, they are supposed to be two different roles uh, bestowed on two different people. Chairman's responsibility should be to run the board. The CEO is the executive who is supposed to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the company operation of the company. So, and of course, under management discussions and analysis, if you look at annual reports that we shall be looking at when we start this uh, subject in my next class, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be able to show you there is no way you'll be able to tell us that you've got annual reports for your company without the MDS management discussions and analysis. That's to start with the chairman. The chairman must give us the outlook of the business. Tell us in this case that this year we made this amount of profit, perhaps like uh, Safaricom, which in this case you can see it's profitability going down. The chairman must come and do the analysis to the public. Tell us we did this and this because the voice revenue is going down. We did this and this. Our profits dwindled a little bit because of our uh, project in Ethiopia, which seems uh, to be sluggish as compared to what we expected. We have pumped so many, uh, a lot of resources there. We have masts now. We have done so, but the revenue coming from Ethiopia is almost nothing. We are even trying to do some impairments of our assets over there because now we are realizing that guys over there have to pay us through the beer, the Ethiopian beer. And the Ethiopian beer, of course, you can't bring it home easily. There's quite a challenge in Ethiopia. There is a challenge of dollars. We have challenge of dollars in Kenya, but we haven't reached levels of uh, some of these countries. Like now Nigeria, you can't get dollars out of Nigeria. There are no dollars there, all right? Like Kenya is really suffering. They have a lot of Nigeria uh, uh, currency there, Naira. They were transporting people all over the world from Nigeria, ac ac accepting uh, to be paid in Naira. 
and now they can't bring Naira back home. If you bring Naira, what will you do with it here? And there are no dollars over there. So you need to queue. They, they, you queue, you apply, and then you queue like that. All right? So shall I be looking at all those things, ladies and gentlemen? We have management discussions. Great managers must really get out of uh, the box and tell the whole world through this annual report that uh, this is what happened and this is what we expect. That's how you'll be able to draw investors your way. That's how you'll be able to uh, convince people that even though things don't look this nice, but in future, we are going to have a blah, 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 like that. Great. Then we have uh, we have uh, global reporting initiatives, the GRI, Guidelines on Sustainability Reporting. We have integrated reporting, very important. Materiality guidelines for financial reporting. And then we have legal and ethical issues in financial reporting. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite uh, a nice paper. So many students uh, fear AFR. I don't fear it at all. I've never feared these papers. But you see, very many people have never known the secret to these papers. It's no longer business as usual. This thing of saying that you will wait for your results in October, and then you start studying AFR, and then you expect to pass. This paper that, uh, that uh, you've started in only two months. No, if you start running, like now you've started, today I've laid down a foundation in terms of discussing with you what is expected as of, of us in future. And then, of course, I expect you guys now to get the learning management system. Look at topic number one. Before we meet again, our next class is on Monday. I need to see things happening, even on WhatsApp, where people are saying, now, Mwalimu, we have gone even through topic number one. We have understood this thing here. But when I come over here, mine will be like to do a recap, and then I do a new past paper question, slow like that. Then the wheel will keep on rolling. Everybody will love this subject. Otherwise, given that today was a very, very fast class, I would want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for creating time to attend this session. And I'm so sure because it was a free of charge class, there are many of you who are here who are yet to make a decision. Of course, RSM Online College under the guidance of this, Mualimu Dr. Joshua Aura, you can never go wrong here. You need to just join us like immediately. Our number is 0719 525, we are charging uh, now from today. We made this announcement. We are charging Kenya shillings 4,500 per paper. And they've got all CPA papers, CS papers, all CIFA papers. All CIFA papers. Of course, and our pay bill, our pay bill, our pay bill is 62, 42, 839, 839. Account number is the subject you are paying for. If you're paying for AFR, you are paying for, uh, in this case, yes, CIFA, not CIFA, but uh, for example, AFM, ETC, ETC, you simply write the papers you are doing. That's the account. That's the account. Great. So have you guys gotten some value for these uh, few minutes you've been together? Have you gotten some value? 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 Great. 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 My LMS does not have, you'll get them. I know why that is the case. That is the case because we haven't yet activated. I'll ensure that today by nine exactly, you shall be able to get an activation. You shall be able to get your LMS activated for you to see everything. And please don't shy off in the, in the WhatsApp. Keep on tagging us there. Tell us this thing is not working. We shall be able to address you. Uh, any discount? No, we're not giving discounts because really we have added lots of value. We have added lots of value to our deliverables. How we are delivering now, this course is not like how we used to deliver them last semester. Last semester, remember last semester, the LMS was on trial. Right now it has uh, passed that stage. Now in this case, it's a uh, passive and development. Now it, 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 it is basically a product that we are giving to you. There's a lot of value addition. That LMS, you're able to get videos, you're able to get this. And remember, like when you look at most of our competitors outside there, they are charging up to 10,000, up to 11,000. And then they can't provide what you have given. So please, there will be no any discounts. You guys, please bear with us. Please support our resources. Support our, 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 our institution, I mean. It takes quite a lot to be able to put up this kind of a 
structures for you guys to enjoy, for you guys to enjoy. Given inflation and other things, please support us and not by just paying fees, by also marketing us. Be our ambassadors. Be the RCM ambassadors there because we have a big dream that we can only achieve with your support, with your support. Otherwise, thank you very much. I would wish now to disappear. Please have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.